Herbert was my brother. He was much more than a friend. He was family. And uh, his loss left a great vacuum in this entire family. I think I'm in a nightmare. I wake up hoping that most of this will be over or that we will hear that it's a joke or that we will hear that it's fake news. Herbert was a fantastic older brother. Um, he always made, he made life exceptionally hard for some of us. And I'll tell you the reason why he set the bars a bit too high. So some of us that came after him, um, we knew that we had tough shoes to fill. From when we were children, was a very focused child. Of all of us, he was the child that from an early age knew exactly what he wanted to study, knew exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to be an accountant. He was a little bit more mature than we were at the time. Uh, when I met him, we were about 12 years old. Uh, but there were things that he used to say that were quite amazing. Uh, I remember once we were just playing and Herbert would say, I, I want to get married at 20 or at most 25 so that by the time I'm 50, I would have stopped paying school fees. I would look at him and say, what are you talking about? That's 38 years from now and <laughs> you're talking. And, but that is the person he was. Playful enjoyed himself, did everything a young boy would want to do. And then all of a sudden, he was this brother who became very serious with his work. So in daddy trying to tell someone like me to work like Herbert and look up to Herbert, I said, you know, sometimes you get to a point when you decide you want to become serious and something, and he never turned back. So he became that brother who I saw as playful, who would play Barry White's music, who come back home, he wants to play music, he wants to live the life. So that brother who, yes, he enjoyed those, that music, but he became so serious with anything he had to do. He was mischievous, yet he was focused. It was a rare combination of mischief and focus. So Mommy Wigwe shared a story with me the other day, and she said, she remembered when Herbert was about, she said he was about six or five, and they were stuck in traffic. And that he looked at her and said, very soon, I won't be stuck in traffic, but when I grow older, I would fly everything. I would have my own jet. And it struck me. So as a child, you could see that Herbert would go places. You know, you could see it in him, you know, because he was a, he was a leader. He had that, those leadership qualities in, in him. A man full of energy, a man full of his dreams, a caring man. Herbert had such a big heart. He's always been a fearless, audacious person. Dr. Herbert was a selfless person. Herbert always wanted to help to help. I found that about him. Very kind. So he was full of energy, like he was unstoppable. Always had so much enthusiasm and optimism for life. Herbert's passion for his people in Isiokbo was so admirable and you know infectious that you won't help but want to be part of his people he's fearless and able to achieve what many men cannot achieve he meant so much to me to the bank to the industry to nigeria to africa to the world indeed and as a banker as everyone would, would recognize a very consummate professional he had the passion for what he was doing. He had a knack for big ticket transactions. It was almost as though he could smell big deals from afar. And like a magnet, he would attach himself to those transactions, ensuring that he secured the transactions for the bank. He is extremely intelligent. For every time he spoke, there was something to learn. You are forced to think about what you're thinking about on the very highest level. Right, because for him, it has to be on that particular level of, you know, space. Herbert and his brother, Aike Mokede, even though we had an excellent relationship before I became governor and while I was governor of Central Bank, um, actually became much, much closer to me after I left the office of the governor of Central Bank. Now, this is the 
exact opposite of what you find with many Nigerians, where uh, they come close to you when you're in office and they leave you when you're out of office, especially if you're in trouble uh, uh, with, with, with the authorities. But these are people who stand by their friends, who stand by you on principle and sometimes pay a price, uh, pay a price for it.